Hi, welcome to the Quipster Film Review Podcast. My name is Vince Leo. I am the film critic for the website Quipster.net. I invite you to check out all of my written work there. Over 3,800 film reviews to choose from at Quipster.net. Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net. Today I'm going to be reviewing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Out of the Shadows. It's an action sci-fi film. Some people might classify it as a family film, but even though it does seem to skew toward younger viewers, I'm not sure if you want to bring the whole family to this, because I don't think it's going for an all-ages kind of thing, but I wouldn't exactly call it a kid's film either, so I guess that'll remain. It's a PG-13 rated film, nonetheless. It's got quite a bit of sci-fi action violence in it. It runs an hour and 52 minutes. The cast brings back Megan Fox, Will Arnett, and introduces Stephen Amell, Laura Linney, Tyler Perry, Brian T. Sheamus, the wrestler from WWE, also known as Stephen Farrelly, Gary Anthony Williams and Jane Wu. Tony Shohub and Brad Garrett do the voices of Splinter and Krang, respectively. And there's even a cameo appearance from one of the Ninja Turtles creators, Kevin Eastman. The director is Dave Green, and the screenplay is by Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec. Before I get into the film, I just want to let you know that I... Enjoy the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles generally. I enjoyed watching the cartoon from the late 80s to the early 90s with my younger brother. My brother is about 13 years younger, so I would babysit with him often. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was one of the very few things that he would like to watch that I was also entertained by. I actually like the first of the original New Line Cinema's live-action Ninja Turtles films. Didn't care for the sequels as much, even though they had their moments here in there. I didn't really like TMNT, which came out a decade ago or whatever, and I enjoyed the original comic. I liked the cartoon series that was on television. Out of the Shadows is the second film in the Michael Bay produced reboot saga. It's the kind of crap that I think we all feared he would make. You know, when you first heard that he was taking on the Ninja Turtles after doing all these Transformers films, there was a lot of trepidation on the fans' part because nobody wanted him to make films that were as bad as the Transformers movies. So when the first film came out in 2014, it was not a great movie by traditional critical standards, but at least it was better than any one of those god-awful Transformers films. Unfortunately, I don't think that this follow-up can make the same claim, even though it's doing a lot of fan service for those people who enjoy the Ninja Turtles. Still, it does play like a Transformers movie. There's even an appearance of a Transformer within this movie. There's a man in a Bumblebee costume during a parade. It's meant as a playful nod, but it mostly serves, at least to me, as a grim reminder of just who is behind the monotony we're witnessing, of course, Michael Bay. In this entry, the dreaded nemesis of humanity, Shredder, who was in prison at the end of the first film, he's broken out of prison by a kooky but brilliant scientist named Baxter Stockman, who's played by Tyler Perry. Baxter has been entrusted to invent an ultra-powerful transporter device that will allow for travel between dimensions. Also on board is the maniacal alien named Krang, who actually kind of came up with this transporter device. He's part giant robot and part evil living brain, and he sets about trying to get Shredder to use some strange mutating ooze to make an army of super soldiers out of the Foot Clan. And they experiment, starting with these dim-witted but burly thugs named Bebop and Rocksteady. They immediately turn into a Rhino Man and a Warthog Man, respectively. People who enjoy the original Ninja Turtles cartoons will get a kick out of seeing them in the live-action film again. They weren't really done justice the first time around in the original series. Krang, who is actually making his first big screen appearance, he has a wild scheme that involves gaining the otherworldly pieces together to form a gargantuan spaceship called the Technodrome, which is so powerful that he can usurp the entire planet of Earth with it once it's assembled. Leading the resistance yet again are the titular quartet of Turtles, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, and Raphael. They, along with uh, their ally, news reporter April O'Neill, once again played by Megan Fox, and spirited hockey-loving cop named Casey Jones. Again, the fans will love the fact that he's in this movie. Once again, he's played by star of the TV show Arrow, Stephen Amell. 
Vern Fenwick is back, played by Will Arnett. He's that smarmy cameraman who we learn got credit for saving New York from Shredder and the gang last time around because the Turtles aren't really ready for the world. They don't want to be known because they don't want people to be alarmed by their presence. Meanwhile, the Turtles are conflicted about what to do about the mysterious ooze because it not only has the power to turn humans into creatures, but also to turn the Turtles into humans, which could mean an end to them feeling like pariahs in this world where they're seen as monsters, despite their determination to be New York City's protectors. So there's some dissension within the ranks because of that. As a movie, younger kids who are allowed to watch PG-13 levels of violence likely will already be on board with the sequel before the first frame of film ever appears on the screen. I do think that adults who did not grow up watching and loving the cartoon series or the comic books, you know, this will be a lot of noise for those people and tumult of little to no interest to keep anybody who's not already an avowed fan engaged for its too long near two hour runtime. Longtime fans of the property are probably going to be immune to the film's ineptitude just because it reintroduces major characters into the reboot world that they've come to low that they grew up watching, including favorites like Casey Jones and Krang and the muscular bromantic duo of Bebop and Rocksteady. If you're just yearning to see all of these characters appear on the big screen in a big budget film, no amount of garbage that they throw on the screen is going to dissuade you from thoroughly enjoying reliving that nostalgia that you probably felt when you were a kid. If those names mean nothing to you, and they won't if this is your first exposure, you'll likely leave the theater wondering what all the fuss is all about from the fans. There's little enjoyment to be found in any of these thinly developed cartoonish personalities from what is evidenced on the screen in front of you. If there was never a Ninja Turtles movie or cartoon or comic book before this or video games, if this series, this Michael Bay series, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film from 2014 and this follow-up, people would just not go to the movie theater because these are terrible movies, unfortunately. And this one is probably my least enjoyable time at the movie theater, despite the fact that I will acknowledge that it does know its fans very well and it does cater to them. Unfortunately, it doesn't really cater to traditional moviegoers, and that's why I cannot recommend it for anybody who is not an avowed fan of the Ninja Turtles altogether. If you're not going to go into this movie absolutely determine that you're going to like it and you're going to have a hoot with it and it's going to completely push all of the buttons to make you remember things that you saw when you were a kid whether it was in the cartoon series or in the original trilogy of live action films then judged with a critical eye this movie completely falls apart it's too many uninteresting characters crammed into a plot that's too convoluted for most kids to follow and yet it's also too generic in its plot for most adults to give a lick about Out of the Shadows is a brainless, low-grade popcorn movie spectacle that only unabashed fans will come out of the movie extolling the virtues of. It's perpetually noisy, it's darkly shot, and it's permeated with gloopy, unappealing CGI elements. I mean, even the pizza that they eat is CG. It's hard on the eyes and on the ears, and for me, it was hard on the soul, despite the fact that I generally like the Ninja Turtles. I suppose it should be viewed as an unintentional irony uh, that a movie this utterly mindless would have a brain as the bad guy. I'm giving this film one and a half stars out of four. And one and a half stars on my scale means that it is poor. And I, while I realize that Ninja Turtles fans will be upset by that rating and probably will never listen to me again, I have to call it like I see it. I was bored through about 90% of this movie. I was completely not engaged by any of it. Certainly, I do think Ninja Turtles fans, it throws enough Easter eggs in here to probably keep you awake or remind you of that one time you saw that one thing. And But I have to actually review it for or not just fans. I have to review this as a film altogether. If you came into this movie not knowing anything about the Ninja Turtles, it would not really be an entertaining experience. Just as an aside, I will say that I saw this in a movie theater filled with people who were pretty happy to see just about anything. They laughed through all of the trailers. They were having a great time. And yet, 
that that did not stop them from looking at their phone throughout. There was even a kid a few seats next to me who had Ninja Turtles shoes on that lit up whenever he stepped on them or stomped on them. They had the strobe effect and he initially was engaged with the movie and then he just started to play with his shoes throughout the entire rest of the movie. And you know what? I didn't even bother to tell his parents to please tell him to knock it off because I would say that those shoes were probably more entertaining to me than what was going on on the screen. So I almost wanted to tell him just stomp on them more because at least that is keeping me awake. But I I do want to say that that kid also, I heard him a couple of times saying, Mom, when is the movie going to be over? So I think that maybe (laughs) as much as kids love the Ninja Turtles and adults who remember the Ninja Turtles as kids enjoy these guys as a property, I do think that it is very forgettable and it's not really that engaging. So maybe in a few years, people will look back and realize, well, maybe that wasn't such a good movie after all. One and a half stars goes to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm sorry if I ruffled anybody's feathers, especially TMNT fans. It's not my intention to seem like a total movie snob. I love the Ninja Turtles, at least in theory. I love the original cartoon and watching it with my brother. But I don't think that this property, the way that Michael Bay and company are doing it, is the right way to go, unfortunately. I really don't like the way that it's shot. I don't like the look of it. I don't like the feel of it. I don't like any of that. Those are apologists for this movie are saying, oh, it's just like the cartoon. You know, go back and look at the cartoon. April O'Neil, Megan Fox is just not the same character. You know, the the way that they treat the Ninja Turtles is not the same. I think people are looking at it with rose-colored glasses of nostalgia and just deciding that they're going to like it and they're going to defend it no matter what. They want people to continue making these movies. They don't want to not have these movies around, unfortunately. I guess it waits to be seen. It was the number one film at the box office over the weekend. I, I think it was kind of a soft one, but... You know, nevertheless, this will make money and perhaps we'll see a third one. Hopefully at some point somebody decides, hey, let's actually try to make something interesting or engaging or really funny, you know, instead of mind pollution. But anyway, enough of this diatribe. I do thank you for at least listening this long and I hope that if you do get to go to the movies, you go with the intent of having a good time. And if you're a Ninja Turtles fan, perhaps you will. And if you're not, I'd say (laughs) there's a lot better things to check out at the movie theater. 